Hello class. Today we're working on chapter 18, which is revenue recognition. Now this chapter has some problems, but they're not really big problems. They are more about how to recognize revenue. This is a big problem because some of the contracts are pretty complex, and so revenue recognition is a big deal, but it's not large problems in terms of intermediate accounting, but it you know, drives everything, uh, certainly for a, your business. So one of the things I, I did is I went back and looked at the study guide and I've given you access to the study guide. I think that might be very helpful to use the study guide and there's also some multiple choice questions and I think that's going to be a helpful thing maybe from now on. Now let me give you a little pep talk here. We have 18 through 24. Not all chapters are equally weighted but there's some uh, big chapters and there's some small chapters. So this is kind of a small chapter in terms of how many problems you need to do. So this video doesn't really have any problems. It's just giving you terms. Make sure you understand the terms and um, make sure that you do homework and so you're in good shape on the exam coming up. All right, so let's get started. Now, I just have copied the learning objectives from the chapter and this we're going to spend time on the first four learning objectives and everything else is in the appendix and we're not going to do the appendix. Uh, it's in the appendix for a reason, but we'll talk about these terms here in just a little bit. Um, no problems, but, but the terms, I want you to be aware of this. Now, we're going to talk first about the fundamental concepts related to recognition and measurements. Like we said, contracts are becoming more complex. So when do we recognize revenue is more complex to manage? Now, just a little quick thing here. Remember, we basically have the cash basis of accounting and the accrual basis of accounting. And the accrual basis is what we do in accounting. We say that revenue, we recognize revenue when you earn it, right? When you, not just when you receive the cash, but when you earn it uh, because you perform the product or service and, and that's what's important. So that's what we're talking about here with uh, revenue recognition. Now we have a new standard that's called revenue from contracts with customers. It's converged, means IFRS and the FASB have worked on it. So it has an asset liability approach to revenue recognition. So the companies account for the revenue based on the asset or the liability arising from the contract with the customers. So they have to analyze the terms of the transaction and uh, measurement to try to figure out how much revenue do they recognize. Now, contracts are important. You have to have them uh, because you need to know what your requirements are, what um, you can expect, and so on. So there is a five-step process, and part of this chapter is doing this five-step process. Number one, identify the contract. Is there a contract? What does it say? Identify the separate obligations in the contract, uh, the separate performance obligations for each party. Determine the transaction price. Now you think, well, that might be easy. Sometimes that gets to be a challenge. Then we allocate the transaction price to the separate performance obligations. We might have a service that has list five different things we'll do. Well, how do we allocate that? to the five things that we promise. And then we recognize revenue when each performance obligation is satisfied. So let's go in depth a little bit. The first one is identify the contract. So obviously a contract is the agreement between two or more parties. It increases enforceable rights or obligations. And it's a valid contract when it has commercial substance the parties have both approved it. They've both signed it. The contract identifies the rights of the parties. The payment terms are identified, and it's probable that the consideration will be collected. Consideration means generally um, cash or the account will be collected, so on. Now, revenue is recognized only when a valid contract exists, and until performance occurs, there's no net asset or no net liability occurs. Number two, separate for performance obligations. The company must provide a distinct product or service 
for a performance obligation to exist. They've got to be something positive that they can provide to a customer. So the transaction price, usually, and I'm, this is the spreadsheet that we're working on, so I'm not going to read it to you directly. But the transaction price is generally a fixed amount. It could be variable. If it's variable and there's a range of opportunities, such as um, we might receive a price concession or a volume discount or a rebate or a bonus or a royalty or whatever, then we must estimate it. And we have two ways to estimate. It could be expected value, which is maybe probability weighted. So we expect 50% to be 10,000 and then 40% would be 8,000 and then 10% would be 6,000. We multiply all that together and that's our expected value. Or we could be the single most likely amount and we, we book that as revenue. So once again, it needs to be reasonably assured that we're going to receive something from this contract. All right, so also, this could be a time value of money challenge where you have to figure out what the interest rate is. So let's say that um, imputed interest rate might need to be calculated. So imputed interest rate is the idea, let's say that we normally charge $10,000, but because we give them extra time to pay, or they can have a payment schedule, they pay 11,000. Well, you can kind of figure that out and say, well, that means there is some kind of interest involved. We can kind of figure out what that interest would be. So for example, if, if we required $10,000, but you can pay a year later and you pay 11000 you can easily run that calculation and says, hey, that looks like it's a 10% uh, financing rate, a 10% interest rate on the time value of money. Now, there also could be some non-cash consideration. You could receive non-cash an asset generally, right? So it needs to be measured at the fair value of the asset received. Now, if, if um, that's not possible to figure out the fair value, you have to have some way of estimating you know, the, the price of what you've given up. So the fair value of something uh, the asset received has to be some kind of uh, calculation or an estimate or um, we look at similar assets. So all this can be more complicated if it's not just cash, right? Cash is the easiest to, to value. Number four, we allocate the transaction price to the separate performance obligations. So we allocate based on the relative fair value. And so we might have five different things we provide all in one package and we have to figure out what's the relative fair value of each of those and that's the standalone selling price. And so if we don't have information available then we've got to use our best estimate of what it might be as a standalone by itself. So we could use the adjusted market assessment approach. What would somebody be willing to pay for just that service alone or just that product alone? We could do an expected cost plus a profit margin. So we say, well, our cost is 8,000 and we're going to build in a $2,000 profit margin. So therefore we think our revenue is 10,000. And then you could do a residual pro. You could say, well, the whole thing is worth 50000 And if we back out these other four items, they have a fair value of forty-five. Then this one item must have a value of 5000 Now, the fifth one is we recognize revenue when each performance obligation is satisfied. So you satisfy that obligation when the customer obtains control of the good or service. So once we sell them that product, we give them that product, or we provide that service, then that's satisfied. We can recognize revenue. And it may be satisfied over a single point in time or over a period of time. Now, we're going to apply the five-step process to major um major revenue recognition issues. So these are just extra terms that you need to be aware of that, that make revenue a little bit more challenging. So what about sales and returns allowance? If you think you've got lots of returns or you're going to have lots of allowances you're going to have to make because of the product either being defective or 
uh, that's just the nature of your product, has lots of returns or allowances, then you've got to think about, um, do you adjust your revenue? Um, do you have to refund? And so when does it become revenue and how much revenue gets to be a big issue? If you have just a small percentage, then you can just say, hey, all this is sales. But if you have 30% that's returned on a regular basis, then when you actually sell a product, you may only get to recognize 70%. That would be prudent rather than the full 100% and then act like you're surprised when there's returns. So next one down is repurchase agreement. Sometimes you have a, a product that you sell and you you build in the right or the obligation or the right to repurchase the asset you know, in five years or three years or one year or whatever. And so you have to think about, is that really a sale or is that just some kind of um, financial transaction? So if you sell something and you can buy it back five years later at 50%, that's probably a sale. Um, but if you buy it back at 100%, that's probably not a, a sale. So repurchase agreement could be a red flag. We also have a bill and hold arrangement. And a bill and hold arrangement is the buyer wants to buy, but they're not ready for delivery. So they say, hey, can we buy it? Will you hang on to it for another month? We're building a building. We want that maybe HVAC. We want to buy it right now. You hold on to it for a little bit longer. And so um, it when does revenue happen? The buyer's not ready to take delivery, but does take title and accepts the billing. So, so in this case, that's a good deal for the seller. They say, yes, we're happy to bill you and you have it and we'll just hold it for you for another month or two. And, and that's completely acceptable. We're doing that as a service to our, our customer or our client. The next one is called a principal or agency um, relationship or principal agent. And if you have, for example, you have a principal that's kind of the, almost like the owner, and then you have an agent. So maybe an example, I don't know if this is a perfect example, but if you have an insurance company and you have agents for that insurance company, um, maybe it's a separate entity, but, but what happens is you're selling a product for the insurance company and you don't recognize the entire sale, you would get a commission on that. So the principal recognizes the revenue when the good or service is sold, and then the agent recognizes the commission as revenue, not the entire sale as revenue. All right, let's talk about consignment. Consignment is a principal agent relationship. So let's think about a real simple example like an antique mall. So if you are a antique dealer, you might set up a booth in a little antique mall and so what happens is that is a store that has 15 different booths and they are going to be the agent. The consigner is the principal, the, the person that owns the inventory in that little booth. So let's say Abe puts his antique furniture in the antique mall. So Abe is the consigner and the consignee is the agent or the antique mall. So if somebody browses and looks and says, hey, I want to buy this furniture for $100. They give the agent the $100. The agent turns around and gives, say, $90 to Abe, and then they get to keep 10 as the commission. So the consigner recognizes a revenue of 90 and the consignee re uh, recognizes revenue of the 10. All right, next one down is warranties. Warranties, if you have significant warranties, then you have to build in, it could be an assurance type or service type. So a separate performance obligation is not recorded for assurance type warranties. We're going to make it good when, if there's a, a damaged product or, dam or a problem with serv uh, the service or whatever, a service type warranty are separate performance obligations. If we say we will provide service on a future date, then that is a separate obligation that we're required to make. 
The last one is, what if you, you require non-refundable upfront fees? So it could be to start your membership, to start the initiation or setup fees or whatever, maybe to start with a, a uh, warehouse club membership, you, you charge $100. So that upfront fee is not refundable. You're going to earn it over the 12 months of the period that's benefited. So you get to recognize that you get the cash and you recognize that revenue over 12 months. All right, the last little bit here to present the information or the disclosure involving revenue, you've got to look at your contract assets and your contract liabilities. So you've got to think about what are your rights to receive and what are your obligations to provide. And so one thing that happens is if we're looking at revenue recognition, here's an important point, collectability is not a consideration in determining revenue recognition. That's going to be a bad debt expense. Companies need to record revenue at, a, at the gross without considering credit risk and then recognizing bad debt expense according to their estimates. So if you uh, have some concerns about credibility, collectability, then you don't sell in the first place. Now, the last little thing I want to mention here is this is extra. This is not problems we're going to make, but you need to know these terms. In the example, in the event of a long-term construction contract, there could be a percentage of completion. Let's say it takes 15 months to build a building. We are the contractor that's building the building. Do you only receive revenue at the end? That would be a completed contract. You receive payments, but you don't recognize any of the revenue till it's finished. Or what's more common is percentage of completion that says, look, we're going to recognize when we're 30% complete, we're going to recognize revenue. When we're 50% complete, we'll recognize revenue, the additional revenue. So we recognize revenue as a continuous process along with construction progress. So maybe every month or two or three, we recognize revenue. So for example, if the contract um, completion is 30%, we're gonna recognize 30% of the revenue. Now this is probably the normal situation. The other situation is if you're concerned about collectability or you're concerned about the estimate then you recognize revenue only on the completion of the contract. And it's based on final results, not estimates, so that's uh, deemed to be, hey, it's, it's a little more um, assured because are we really 30% complete? Or are we 32% complete or 35% complete? But a lot of times you will see the percentage of completion method. So you need to know what that is. I'm not gonna require any problems on that. Um, and so once again, I think you ought to go back and look at, this is new for, for chapter 18, look at the study guide that's in our shared folder. I think that's going to be helpful for you. Let me know if that's helpful, and I'll be glad to um, I'll provide them for the re remaining chapters. Hey, thanks for watching. Good luck.